Hi, it's Rob here. Quick one, practical one for you. So do you ever feel lost? Do you ever feel like you don't know what to do? You don't feel like you have the answers. You've tried or thought or asked a thousand people. You still don't have the answers. You don't know what business model to forge forward with. You don't know how to get yourself out of the, the rut or the hole that you're in or pivot your business in the lockdown or whatever it is. So if you ever don't know what to do, here's what to do. Now, I mentor quite a lot of people and I don't have all the answers. And sometimes people's business models that I mentor them in are a bit different to mine. And they'll say, hey, Rob, what do I do in this situation? And if I haven't got the direct experience, um, which of course happens because I'm, um, I am, what's the word? Is it fallible? Yeah, the opposite of infallible. Um, and I haven't done every business model. I haven't got all the experience in the whole world ever. Um, I revert to this answer. So when you don't know what to do, I believe the thing to do is to start making a series of quick tests. You don't know what business model to get into when you're looking to leave your job. Well, then go and do two or three courses, follow two or three influencers, uh, see what's out there as quick as you can, um, and then maybe start testing one or two or three of them and give yourself, I don't know, a month, two, three months to implement a series of tests. Now, in reality, you don't really know what's going to happen in the future. So the only way to find out the answer of the unknown is to test various strategies and scenarios until one lands. So in marketing, and let's use the example of pay-per-click advertising, whether that's Google ads, Facebook ads, Amazon ads, you don't in reality know which ads, which headlines, which landing pages, you don't know what's going to work. So all good marketers know that all marketing is a test. Everything is a test. Also, you might have a clear idea, for example, for a title of your book, but actually your audience might not like that title. They might not resonate and pull that book off the shelf. So in reality, the best way to create a title is not one that you're in love with, but it's one that you've done polls and asked questions about in you know, Facebook groups and in various communities and your, your clients um, to get... Uh, a proven set of data on what actually works in your, um, you, you know, your target demographic. So when you don't know what to do and you're lost and you're stuck and you're confused and you're overwhelmed, you need to start doing something and testing it to see if it works. Let's say that you're just not really happy in yourself. You don't feel fulfilled. Start testing stuff. So go out on long walks. I did that. That works for me. Um, I've been missing, I think, a hobby. So I've just um, asked my um, agent, legend, VA, um, who's been with me, what, for 12 years plus, I've asked him to go and find me a, wing a local Wing Chun sensei. I used to do martial arts for years, and I got pretty good at it. Um, and there's a bit of a hole in my life, hobby-wise. So I've asked him to go and find me a Wing Chun. Um, seventh Dan sensei, it'd probably be two foot six, <laughs> uh, and, and, and to come to my house because I don't really want to go to classes because I don't want the time commitment. So, um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, there's these course junkies out there, or there's all these people try, trying all these different um, business ideas, and, you know, you should only focus on one thing. Well, how do you know what one thing to focus on if you haven't tried what's out there? Um, so the, here's the thing with tests as well. The quicker you do the tests, the quicker you experiment, test, the quicker you can tweak, review, repeat, and scale. Test, tweak, review, repeat, scale. Test, tweak, review, repeat, scale. Um, and that's the advice I give, or the suggestions, I don't really do advice, suggestions that I give people when their business model isn't going where they want, they've got to pivot it. They're lost, confused, overwhelmed, frustrated, challenged. They haven't got a great routine, maybe. A series of tests. That's, that's a good example, your routine. Now, I wrote a book called Routine Equals Results. Um, and that book really is a way for you to create your ideal routine bespoke to you based on your own circadian rhythm, work habits, key life areas, key result areas, income generating tasks, responsibilities, you know, whether you're single or whether you're married with children, of course, impacts that, whether you have a full-time job or you don't have a job, of course, impacts that. And you know, in podcasts, and I'm often asked this, oh, Rob, what's your morning routine? Like my morning routine 
is going to save them. No, 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 no. My morning routine is my morning routine. And I've been testing and tweaking and changing and adapting and improving my morning routine, my day routine, for probably three years now. And I'm probably on version 17.600. So the ideal way for you to create your ideal routine is to go, okay, let's test what time I get up. Let's test what foods I have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Let's test when I do exercise. Let's test when I go to bed. Let's test when I put my key life areas, my key result areas, my income generating tasks in. Um, And then you find out what works and what doesn't. And then just as you've got your ideal routine, then there's lockdown and the world changes and you have to tweak that again. So really, um, in, in sales, they say always be closing. In marketing, they say always be testing. And really for me, business and life in general is an ongoing series of tests to A, rule out what doesn't work, and B, uh, lower lower number and percentage, but B, find what does work, C, implement into your life, and then D, continue the testing for the rest of your life because what worked yesterday isn't necessarily a given that it's going to work today. When I get up is varied from three o'clock to six o'clock. Um, and that twi- so Costa Coffee aren't opening till six now, which is really annoying. So I was getting up at um, three or four or five. And now I'm really getting up at five or even half five because Costa Coffee doesn't open till six. They need to sort that out. If Costa Coffee opened at four, I'd be getting up at 3.30. I like getting up early because I like working with no distraction. And I get way more done in the morning because there's no WhatsApp messages because no one's on WhatsApp. There's no emails, no text messages, no phone calls. Not many people are on social media. So those distractions are gone. My energy is better in the morning than the evening. Now, you might be the opposite. So you'd read all these books. Oh, yeah, you know, entrepreneurs, millionaires, they get up at 5 a.m. They work 15-hour days. That could be the worst thing ever for you. Um, If you're like an arty, creative person, a night owl. Um, I've just had a question here, which I'll just take from Scott. Do I still stand by my 70, 20, 10 model or better results with a 70, 30 or something similar? Look, that's a guide, Scott. So how many business models should, should you be implementing? Well, I think lockdown has actually proven what I've been saying for many years, because a lot of successful people say, follow one course until successful. Focus, follow one course until successful. Well, Primark and Ted Baker and loads of the, the, the high street they could, they could all be dead. Um, some of them already are. Lots of retail have gone into administration. So if you were having retail and online, maybe 50-50, then you probably would have survived the lockdown much better. Now, a lockdown or a quarantine or a recession or some kind of blindsided event, a legal case, um, you know, a reputational issue, a health scare, all these things can hit you at any time. And because of that, I think it's vital not to just rely on one stream of income or one source of business. I think that's vital. But of course, five, because, you know, some people take multiple streams of income too literally and they go, right, I'm starting today. Yeah, and I'm going to do 16 income streams because I'm a hustler. Um, but of course, you spread yourself too thin and you can't achieve any of them. You can't get them implemented because you can't spend enough time on each one. So for me, it's 70, 20, 10, 70% of your time on your main income stream or business model or just area where you want to spend your time, 20% of your secondary and 10% on a future one, one that you're researching maybe. Now, of course, that depends on if you have a full-time job or not. And if you have a full-time job, that might have to be your 70. So it does depend on how many hours you want to concentrate on work. If you can only do 10 hours um, work a week outside of your um, job, maybe you do 70, 30. Um, Don't have three income streams or three business models for the sake of it. Um, But many people who follow me are passionate, enthusiastic entrepreneurs. And therefore, you know, they want multiple streams of income. They want to be diverse. They want variety. But of course, you can have too much diversification and too much variety. Okay, cool. So hopefully that's helpful, Scott. And that's a good question. Um, Right. So I better finish up now because I have my therapy session. I have my therapy session 8 a.m. every Friday on my walk. So if you don't know what to do in any area of your life, here's what to do. You start implementing tests as quick as you can. My job when I'm testing, marketing, strategy, things in my personal life, my job is to discount what doesn't work as quick as possible. Because once you've discounted what doesn't work as quick as possible, then you're left with what does work and it doesn't take you months or years. So how can you do these down and dirty quick tests? Maybe you can set up a routine for a week, change it up the next week, change it up the week after and run three tests for three different ideal um, routines for you um, over three weeks. And then you implement the one that works. 
Um, and as well as finding the, um, the one that does work, it's about getting rid of all the other variables. Now, there's going to be a lot of things in life you're not going to know the answer to. And even your mentors and people who you follow on podcasts and Facebook lives, they're not necessarily going to know the answer. I really believe in business when it comes to books and titles and courses and products and services. I believe you know, a series of small tests and polls and surveys and questions to um, my community, my buyers, my customers. I think that that's absolutely vital. Um, too many people get um, set on their own ideas being fixed instead of thinking, you know what, I need to write a book for my market, my audience. Um, be careful not to get sucked into the trap of doing work for your peers, because your peers is not your market. So people write books for their peers, for um, you know, their group of small friends to go, oh, yes, that's a very well-written book, of which they wouldn't buy them, uh, and there's 10 of them, whereas you might have 10 million in your ideal market. So I, I write books of very simple words that are 10-year-old could read my book and know all the words. I write like I speak as opposed to being well-written. I, I, I will win no literary prizes for my books, but I'm not writing my book for critical acclaim. I'm writing my book for the masses to understand and implement. And to understand and implement something, it needs to be simple. And when I write a book, I've always asked my community, what book do you want me to write next? I might have... I've actually got about 20 book ideas right now in my Evernote folder. And I'll just go and do a poll and I'll go and ask my community what I should write next. Job done done a quick test in the market and then I know what to write. So hopefully that's useful. Got my therapy session now. Um, Sam has just asked, will routine equals results ever be on Audible? It is already. Now it's not on Audible on its own, but we did something quite sweet because it's just a short book. At the end of Start Now, Get Perfect Later, my audio um, book um, of a different name, Start Now, Get Perfect Later. At the end of that, we put routine equals results as a bonus. Now the book is a bit... Um, more substantial. It's got some exercises and some downloadable um, cheat sheets, if you like. But as much as I could put on Audible, I put at the end of Start Now, Get Perfect Later. So start now, get perfect later. Go get the book, start now, get perfect later. And when you don't know what to do, start testing things as quick as possible. You've got to be imperfect. You've got to not worry about those tests going wrong. You've got to not worry about what other people think about you. We went live yesterday on the first ever Facebook Live event. I think first ever in the UK, maybe not the world. Um, but we don't know that for sure. It could have been. Um, and we were, what, 10, 15 minutes in and there was an issue with the videos, buffered and then cut out. Um, and we had a couple of minutes there where our tech was a bit wrong. Um, and then we got it going again and then it ended up working really well. But um, I could have decided not to do that test because I was worried about the tech or worried that the fact that it was new or worried that I might look stupid in front of a few hundred people or they may blame me if the tech went wrong. Or I can jump on this test, be one of the first people in the world to um, try this feature. If it goes well, great, I win. If it doesn't go very well, great, I learn. If something goes wrong, there's going to be loads of people in the comments saying, oh, it was buffering, oh, I cut out, oh, I didn't get notified of when it started, I didn't know what the link was, etc. And then, of course, I can take all that feedback and then uh, version two can be better. And really, that's business, I think. Business is getting version one out as quick as you can, as long as it's good enough creating a fair exchange environment, fair exchange price, offering it to your market, maybe in a test launch, improving version two, version three, version four, version five, ever improving, uh, taking out what doesn't work and adding in what does work. And, re and that really, that's life, isn't it? About your hobbies, your exercise routine, your diet routine. And if you see things more as a test than permanent, then you don't fear so much what goes wrong and you don't have the need to be perfect and you can let go more and you can enjoy life more and life can be more of a discovery and an experiment, which I think is fun. So yeah, lots there. I thought I was just going to do like two minutes there and I went off and, and ranted and I'm probably late for my therapy session. So love you all. I hope you found this useful. Please could you share this video? If you follow my work and you like my work, you can of course give me stars, which is helpful. I put all the stars revenue um, back into investing in, you know, we've just built a new studio in my house and trying to ever improve the quality of our work, whether it's the content side or whether it's the, you know, the editing and the, um, you know, the hardware software side. Um, but sharing my work just helps me get out to more people. My personal um, vision is to help as many people on this planet get a better financial education and to start and scale their business. And all your help goes a long way um, sharing it and reaching more people. Hina, thank you for the stars. You're a legend. Shahid, thank you for the stars. You're a legend. You're all legends. Love you all. Mwah. See you on the other side. And remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.